Hi, thanks for joining. Today I'm showing off our latest product, which is a 2-inch sodium iodide spectrometer. It comes in a super compact package. Uh, it comes in a nice kit like this. And believe it or not, this is the entire spectrometer. It's super densely packed with electronics. And most of the enclosure here is the actual sodium iodide crystal. And this is a real professional style spectrometer. It requires a minimum amount of setup. It connects via USB to your computer and will run with Becamoni or with Impulse software. Both softwares are free. And as I said before, this, uh, this spectrometer is super easy to use. Now, unlike the sound card spectrometers, this spectrometer is pre-calibrated, it's pre-adjusted, and there's honestly no, nothing to do for the user except for plugging it in and starting to record their spectra. It also is uh, temperature compensated. So uh, from minus 40 to plus 50 degrees, it's um, relatively stable as far as the drift is concerned. The sodium iodide crystal um, has best resolution at room temperature, which is beneficial for all of us. It uses a uh, USB-C cable and uh, connects uh, to your computer on this side, sorry. And, and there's a little indicator light here, which uh, shows up as uh, yellow and will flash when the recording is running. Super simple. And the benefit of such a small package is that you actually need less shielding. So if you were to build a lead castle around this detector, you will require a significantly less amount of lead than you would with a standard uh, detector. So it's really good. And we can also supply Marinelli beakers, which fit perfectly over the spectrometer like this, and is ideal for uh, sampling things like food and minerals. Uh, so as you can see, even if you had a lead castle around this um, uh, Marinelli beaker, it's still significantly less amount of lead than you would in a traditional lead castle. And the savings in lead might well make up for the difference in cost of the detector. This, this is the latest technology using silicon photomultipliers, which are still relatively expensive. So expect to pay a little more for this spectrometer. But really, it, this is the bee's knees of spectrometers. Let's take it over to the bench and give it a test and see what the resolution is like. All right, we're here at the, uh, at the workbench and I have just launched uh, Impulse and connected the spectrometer. And as we can see, when we click on Submit, we get all the uh, settings which are on the spectrometer. Now, with this particular spectrometer, there are no user settings. There's, it's not necessary for the user to change anything in this window, it's purely for information purposes. So let's hop across to the spectrum window and uh, give our recording a name here. We call it uh, test two. And uh, we hit start, there really is nothing else to do. There is these two fields here, which are the maximum counts and maximum seconds. We can set those and those are the either or criteria which will stop your spectrum. But let's hit start and see what happens. And there we go, there's our spectrum coming in. This is our cesium-137 source. Now, the, uh, the default is uh, 8,192 channels or bins. And as you can see on the x-axis, we have uh, 8,000 channels, uh, which gives you very fine resolution and you can see very fine detail in your spectrum. Now, if we turn on calibration, uh, you can see that we're not calibrated and we're roughly at 662 kilo electron volts on the peak. Uh, the calibration can be fine-tuned using these fields over on the right-hand side here. Simply set the calibration bin and the calibration energy and you can have up to five calibration bins and it uses a second-order polynomial to um, draw the best fit. Uh, if we turn on the uh, peak finder we can see the peaks here and we can see here that it's coming in at 6.8% resolution, which is just excellent. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and um, I hope this spectrometer is something you can use. Thank you.